Hi everybody, welcome to Gunsa TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hobbling Japan. This is episode 190. 190, and I'm back. That's so, right, Ryan is back. <clears throat> I apologize, I was really busy on Gunplay Expo, so I wasn't there, and then yep. I got a cold. Yep. And yep. Um, colds in Japan are notoriously hard to shake. I know, I know. You go to the doctor and they give you like 16 different types of medicine that you have to take for like three months. But Ryan, you can talk again. You got your voice back. I got my voice back. So there's some stuff we need to talk about. What Star do you want to talk Wars, about first? Yes, let's talk about this. Actually, there were a few comments mm. like the reason why Ryan wasn't mm. at um, the Gunplay Expo yeah. or at work last week was it was a Battlefront. Yeah, well, I might have hinted at that. That's <clears> a possibility. Well, it wasn't true, but I have been playing Battlefront. Yeah. And I must say, it's freaking awesome. You got the fire? Fire for I mean, it kind of, it really captures the feel. I just wish there was a campaign mode, but yeah. other than that, I played the, the what's the new map? Jakku. Jakku, like mm -hmm. the, I guess where the new films are set. Mm -hmm. Spoilers. Yeah. It was, it was fun. It was kind of awesome, like real epic kind of scene with a huge super star, star destroyer crashed and, nice. you know, huge epic space battles going above you while you're trying to protect yourself from... I was okay, on, and the cool thing is like I was uh, Princess Leia's like honor guard, like she oh, okay, yeah, spawns yeah. in the game, and then you can choose to be an honor guard and just you know, keep her alive. Yeah, keep her alive. <laughs> shoot stormtroopers. I don't know the honor know. guards. Like they're the first ones to go. <laughs> no, I died pretty quick. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'm like, why did they pick me? <laughs> okay. Anyway, but so uh, while we're talking Star Wars, I want to talk about this because we brought these on the show. Now. Yes. Uh, when I was at the Gunpla Expo afterwards, I went to the Seven Eleven to pick up some meat because I was hungry. And I saw all the Star Wars stuff there, and I went, oh man, like Star Wars is coming soon. And the guy at the counter must have overheard me, because he hands me this. <clears throat> well, and they're only supposed to give it away to people who buy their tickets to 7-Eleven, but he just handed it to me because I, you know, starry-eyed foreigner, I guess. So, uh, we have the... the this massive Star Wars shirt on. That's right. We have the 7-Eleven <laughs> uh, newspapers we've shown here before, but now, of course, we have... What's his name? The 88. The Bull. The Ball. We're seeing more and more of this now. Um, now there's no spoilers for the new movie. Like we've seen this kind of thing before, where they show Yo, you. What I love um, about this is it's called Size, size Wars. Yeah. Can you see that? Oh, Size Wars. Yeah, the same font. You know, we've all I been to that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm the biggest. That's what she said. All right. So one thing that's kind of cool <laughs> is you open up this thing, and it's massive. Right? I'll need your help here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. You which, open which it up. Where are we looking? Like this. Okay. Now this gives you kind of a. A chart of how everybody's related. So they're all like, brothers. Huh? Yeah, well, everybody's from the same family. It's a small <laughs> galaxy. But, uh, you know, they kind of link everybody in there. But at the top, you have all these new characters here. And it says, well, how are these people oh, spoilers. related? spoilers. There's no spoilers. They don't give spoilers. it to you. Spoilers. They just say, how are these people fitting in? So, of course, that's what we got to see when we go to the theater on the 18th. Man, they have, I didn't realize they have Gordula the Hutt. But yeah. she was never in the movie. I know, they just keep adding stuff in there because okay. it appeared in some of the screenplays and stuff. But there you go. We will find out how these new characters relate to all things Star Wars when we when we go to the theater in two weeks' time, Ryan. Yeah. Two I've weeks been catching up time. on my movies. Yes. And yes, uh, everybody in the office has been watching <laughs> And Ryan, is there something you want to say? Yeah, there's something I want to say. Um, okay. I watched the um, prequels and you know what? Here it comes, wait for it. I used to think the Revenge of the Sith was the best. Crap. No, I oh, used no. to think it was the best. The best of the three prequels. Best of the three prequels. Okay. But then I rewatched them and I think it's the worst. I think this the best is the Clone Wars and the and then um the Jar Jar Binks one. Yeah, Return of Jar Jar or whatever. Yeah. And then the Revenge of the Sith. But the Revenge of the Sith, like, that's where Darth Vader turns. Yeah, yeah. And it makes no sense. What are you talking about? I think it makes all kinds of sense. I think he's just an emotionally immature little. No, no, what I mean, it doesn't make sense in that, like, you watch the originals and then you watch that and you're mm -hmm. like, really? Really? Yeah. Really? I always felt like Star Wars was the, the four, five, and six were kind of lighthearted at its core, lighthearted. Yeah, of course, yeah, there's some yeah, serious yeah, stuff yeah. going on in there. Uh, but when you see episode three prior to that, you're thinking, whoa, this is really heavy. Well, like, the first two prequels, I think if you just look at it as a comedy, it's freaking awesome. Like it is an it's an amazing comedy, but then you watch two and you're like, whoa, what happened to the comedy here? That's and why the thing, is Anakin Ryan, retarded? It's not supposed to be a comedy. <laughs> it's supposed to be serious business. Well, then George should learn how to write. And George failed. But anyway, <laughs> this is called Gumpla TV. Yeah, we so can talk we about will, Star Wars for a long we'll time. We'll get we back will to in the coming weeks. And yeah, thanks um, for Todd for you know. Yeah, for filming. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about. He's that. big into Gundam, so yeah, he likes yeah. his Gundam. <clears throat> we'll have him on the show, of course, again, actually in this episode. But before that. 
And we need to talk about what just went up on our website. Yes. Okay, so let's do that. All right, the first one I want to show everybody is this uh, Gundam Gujian in 1 100 scale. We saw this at the Gumpla Expo. And it was massive. How was, massive is it? Well, massive? we'll be talking about the, uh, the IBO uh, 1 100 Barber Toast on the show today. That's maybe standing, I would say, 12, 15 centimeters tall. This thing looked like it was a good five centimeters or more taller. And of course, like twice as wide. IBO is Iron Blooded Orphans. Iron Blooded Orphans. And it, this thing is monstrous. And of course, everybody was excited to see it at the show. And mm -hmm. now Bandai released information. So, you know, now's your chance. Get your pre order in. Uh, the next kit we're going to talk about is from Gundam Origin. And it's another, like, uh, prototype. It's, this is the, the Dom test prototype in HD scale. Now, we've seen, uh, you know, the Mobile Worker and, and uh, the Zakus, Char Zaku, and the RX 72 from Origin. Well, now they're bringing out the Dom. We get the Dom version as well. And uh, in HG as well, coming out in February, we have another option set. This is Iron Blood Orphans again. And you get set number four plus the mob Mobile Worker. Also, uh, we have some more surprise kits. Mm -hmm. uh, Bandai has decided they want to keep us in suspense a little bit longer. They're making so, a habit of it. Yes, they are. So this is a spring thing, I think. So February, along with the, you know, the Guji and the Dom, we're going to see MS... C and MSD. So that's of course a temporary name. We haven't been showing any uh, promotional. Then they're just yet. like running out of ideas, and they're like, "Well, we may need more time." That's, that's right. Just... Maybe <laughs> <laughs> they're like ahead of themselves when it comes to the, the, the anime development. They're just kind of making it up as they go along. Who knows? Okay, so that's all the new stuff that just went up on our site. Now, Ryan, you want to talk about something that's kind of going back up on our site? Yes, we're getting a restock of the PG Unicorn and the Banshee Norm. You're nice. And, and the, LED. the LED sets. I know. And the LED sets, sorry. So, it's awesome. yeah, and um, I think the Norn, I mean, if you missed out, I think this time around, if you're, if you're yeah. pressing that button as yeah. we speak, yeah. you'll probably get it this month. Yeah, Bandai has said that they're going to do their best to, to pump out as many as they can, I think. As well. uh, of the Norn. Of uh, the, the Norn, Norn, not the Unicorn. The Unicorn is still limited. It's kind of flipped, you know, when they put out the Unicorn the first time, they. they they gave us like plenty and yeah. then the banshee came and we hardly got any well now it's flipped now the norn is coming and the unicorn maybe not so much but and there's the led set so the if LED you really want to do that thing. don't forget sid did a ton of videos yes and that thing is beautiful it's amazing both it of them are amazing. beautiful if, i would recommend everybody buy both if they can like, yeah. or build both but if you only choose one choose your favorite and uh, just enjoy it get the led set if you can put it in there it takes it takes some work you know you saw in the video it's just amazing. Like I have them sitting next to my computer monitor at home, and like, yeah, I'll be playing games or whatever. But I'll just reach over and I'll just push the button and light it up <laughs> as I wait for screens to load and stuff. Like I just, I just light it up. I love looking at it. It's amazing. So if you missed out the first time, now is your chance. Get in on it. And there will be limited, yeah, like for a limited time. So yeah, you know, yeah. if you're sitting on some extra cash during Christmas, That's right? Because it's present time. It's good timing on. Bad nice part because of the year end and the holiday. And Grab your else. parents or your loved ones or your wife or whoever, your <laughs> call neighbor. Santa. Call Santa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we know PGs restock very infrequently. Due yes, to the we cost do. involved for Bad Nights to produce them. Yeah. So when you have a chance to get one, you have to kind of hit it. Hit it. That's right. Hit so um, instead of talking about PGs, because I don't have one on the desk here, although I could talk all day about those things, we have to talk about Gundam. Now, uh, should we talk about Todd? right now what's happening with Todd or well, Todd's gonna come on yeah Todd's gonna come on frequently yeah, you know so. with the amount of kits coming in with the new series and everything else I don't have time to build them all mm. and Ryan of course has even less time than he did before so I've kind of recruited Todd to kind of come in here and uh, help us out talk mm. about a few kits and stuff like that so last week Ryan you weren't here but I asked him to choose which of the Mark II's he wanted to build and oh, he chose okay. the AUG which left me to build the Titans so I'm actually gonna bring him on the show and I'll ask him to talk about the AUG mm. and uh, the revived kits. Yeah, yeah, Todd um, recently joined HLJ mm -hmm. um, and is helping us out and, you know, customer service and a few other things. And he's fitting in really well. And, yep. you know, he's really into not just Gundam, but actually into model kits. I yeah. don't know if he's really gone into it. Yeah, he talked about it yeah. last week. So, he's got um, 30 years of experience building yeah, his um, scale models. So. He's really into it, and he has a bit more time than I do. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Look at the noob, least busy guy. All right. And he's knowledgeable. Like, it's not some noob, so, like me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he actually says intelligent things. Oh, well, there you go. But anyway, let's grab Todd. Sure. Hi, guys. I'm back, and today we're going to take a look at the revived Mark II that Sid was kind enough to let me build last week. 
Okay guys, so here we have the Revive RX178 Mark II. Now this is the AEU Geek version, which has uh, what I think of it as more standard uh, Gundam colors. You got the light grays, the reds, and the blues, and some yellows in there too. Um, basically, this is just like all the other revives that we have seen to date. The polycaps and the, the joints, they're pretty much similar between this and the other RX-78-2 uh, and the gun cannon as well a bit. So basically it's standard if you've built those already, you've, you're kind of familiar with this kit as it is. I, I really I enjoyed building this kit to be honest, it was, a, it was a pretty easy and simple build. I had really no big issues with it. The aesthetics of this kit, I really like the look of the Mark II. It's, it's to be honest, it's one of my favorite designs as far as the, the Gundams go. And, well, as you can probably see here in the camera already, it's not just the standard snap build. I did take a little bit, uh, I did apply a little bit of weathering to it. I put it together, and I was as I was looking at the kit, I was just thinking, it's it's too clean. For me, the Mark II, I, I, I kind of, I like the look, but for me with this Mark II, I, I want it to be a little bit dirty looking. So I, to apply, if you can tell a bit in the camera, I, I used a Tamiya Weathering Master just to uh, apply a little bit of uh, darkness effects around the, especially around the lighter, the gray parts, and onto the reds as well, and the yellows. And after applying just, just a little bit of weathering, I found it really made the kit kind of pop out more. It's no longer looking just like uh, a toy-like, but it really gave it some, some nice effect, I thought. Um, so bas the color I used basically was the, the soot color. I don't remember which weathering set that is in, but it's, you can find it on our site. And uh, I have a little bit of, also, if we turn it around... Oh! Also, this isn't part of the, included in the manual, but I found out that you can pop on the shield onto the backpack if you want. It comes with a little bit, a little adapter here that you can plug on and just plug the shield in. If you want to give it a, a little bit of a different look. So let me pop that off. And also you can see here on the back, I've... I've applied a little bit of a metallic look to the the, oh, the thrusters. The thrusters on the back. That's actually done with the Weathering Master. To me, Weathering Masters too. It's not a silver paint. It's it's just uh, it's just that Weathering Master. It's like your girlfriend's. What do they call it? It just looks like your girlfriend's makeup <laughs> system, and it comes with a little sponge. Yeah. And my girlfriend doesn't have soot or metallic silver. <laughs> Well, not the same colors, but the <laughs> materials look... Yeah. The material itself looks the same. I'm, I'm actually, I'm wondering if those are manufactured somewhere by some makeup <laughs> company. And to me, it just has them make these custom colors. But for these events, it was it was pretty simple. The, the ones on the top, I just took some Tamiya masking tape and I laid it over the top and then I cut out the hole for the, the, the two uh, mm -hmm. thrusters there. And I took my weathering master and I just brushed it in a little bit. The... The, the other thrusters here, I just popped off and just went over it with my hand with the, the Weathering Master. Now, if you, gotta, if you do the Weathering Master, you have to be a bit careful. It will rub off, so once you do it, though, you just leave it alone and it'll, it'll look good. That's all I've done to it. So, uh, what, other, what else should I mention with this kit? Although, one thing I do have to say is... This kit has good sized feet. This is a mobile suit I can actually see on the battlefield. That's right, and it stands up on its own, which is important. It, it stands up. It's not going to fall over if there's an earthquake, which happens <laughs> quite frequently here, I'm finding out. Yes. And uh, let's see, what else? All right, so let's take a look at some articulation, shall we? So as far as articulation goes, let's start with uh, start from the bottom and work our way up. The legs, they they can articulate out a bench. He can just about do the splits. Maybe not quite there. Still but pretty good. It's still it is pretty good. I have to say. So he can do that. And let's go up with a kick. I. 
I, I cut the skirt in half so that way you can... <laughs> I can, did the same with mine. It can flex. <laughs> I think if you're building these, then he can, he can do a little bit of a dance. He got the, the one nice. leg stand going on, so these big feet really help with the, the stabilization of the kit. So the legs, let's see how about the... the there's no toe bend with these <clears throat> feet. The feet are just a static piece, but... The ankle at least bends enough that you can see the little, uh, you know, th uh, pistons or whatever they've molded right. on there. Yeah, you can bend it out. You can see the pistons. Now, I, I also did a little bit of the the metallic uh, weathering master on the pistons just to give it a little bit of extra... Mm -hmm. extra... Uh, extra look to it, I guess you should say. And, so what else? The knee... The knee has a pretty good... let me move the arm. The knee has a pretty good movement to it also. He can almost touch the back, his back mm -hmm. with the foot there. So that was pretty good. And ben, it makes a big point that the revived series are supposed to bring us better proportions and much better articulation, so... Mm. So far, so good. Yeah, these revive kits, they are pretty decent with the, the articulation. Much better than the old kits, <laughs> if you've built those at all. One thing I one thing I kind of like to do is when a revive kit comes out, I like to go back and I do like to build the old kit alongside the revive, mm -hmm. just to just to compare. So if you haven't built the old kit too, uh, take a look on the side. If you really if you're really really curious and you've got some extra money. And go ahead and uh, buy an old kit just just to see. It's it's kind of fun to build them side by side. I've noticed. Unfortunately, I don't have an old Mark II kit here with me today to show you the. Differences. I guess uh, people new new to the hobby coming in the last five years or so, like they weren't there at the beginning when kits were in some ways just big lumps of plastic that were not able to move much at all. So they don't understand a lot of the um, appreciation people have for say like bendable knees and uh, right. articulation ranges and right. things like that and uh if if you really want to do that one uh, there's a kit coming up the revive gyan yeah now if you've ever built that old gyan kit <laughs> um it's going to be pretty much night and day between that old gyan and the yeah the new that's what one. we're hoping for I'm, same with the force impulse and yeah i'm looking forward to the gyan i hope i hope sid will <laughs> let me build that one for him yeah, we'll see what I can do. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and let's uh, move on up here from the body. Now, this revive kit has a... Let me pop off the waist here so I can show this better to you. It has a nice... You can flex the waist bit mm. a bit. It, yeah. it pops in and it pops out for some extra flexibility there. That was, that was a nice feature, I thought, when I was building this kit. Let's show it with the, the body attached. So if you want to flex it up. You touch can, your toes. Yeah, he can touch <laughs> his toes. Uh, come on, Mark II. You need some exercise. Alright, so that's the the waist. Alright, so then let's uh, move on up and let's take a look at the arms. Now, while we're looking at the arms, I saw something that I really liked when I when I was putting this kit together. So let me pop off his arm so I can show you what I'm talking about. See if I can do it without popping off something else. Oh. I know what you're referring to. Uh, I thought the same when I was building the Titans. Oh, uh, there we go. Alright, now, normally on the HG kits, your your arm, you'll have the little ball joint, which is pretty much standard, and it just plugs right into the the poly cap. But what Bandai did with this kit is they have this plastic cover that covers up the poly cap joint. So normally, you'll see in uh, Japanese master modelers, what they'll do is they'll take some plot plate and they'll kind of build a box around the poly cap so that they're able to go in and and paint these these joints so you don't you're not seeing the poly cap mm -hmm. there but Bandai is kind of they've gone ahead and they've already done that for you so you've got this plastic piece that pops in right over the poly cap joint there in the arm so mm -hmm. I, I have to say I was really I really did like that feature and let me pop this back in so as far as the arm movement goes it's just like the RX-78 it's what you would expect really from 
You know, now he can twist it all the way up. You can twist it down. He can stretch it all the way out. Now that with that piece of plastic you just referred to, you'll find that when you start raising the arm up, you know, laterally, that piece of plastic is going to kind of maybe move towards the, the side of the head. So that might limit some of the articulation there. But um, that's just kind of a feature of the Mark II. It has that kind yeah. of shoulders piece. So right, it's probably better to put that piece in there so the kit is true to the MS design rather than leave it out just for the articulation. Yeah, I would definitely include it. It definitely adds a bit to the design, I feel. So without that plastic piece in there too, you're going to have a bit of a... A bit of a gap really showing the poly cap yep. on the side of it. Now, uh, let me pop off the head also, because they kind of did something similar for the head piece as well. Instead of using the standard poly cap neck joint, they have a, a hard plastic neck joint in here. So this is also something that uh, You'll see master modelers build a plastic box around the poly cap mm. joint so that they can paint it. But this one, you won't have to worry about that. It's it's already plastic, so if you really wanted, you can go in there and paint it. Although it does have, I don't think you would be able to see it in the camera, but there's some holes in the back of the neck oh, yeah, yeah. that you would have to Normal. fill if you really want to be super detailed. <laughs> ah, there goes the backpack, but that's okay. All right, so as far the, as the head itself too, I, I went ahead and I, I wanted to, I cut off the nubs, I sharpened up the V-fin a little bit, just give it a little bit extra detail. Mm. And let's see, what else am I missing? That bazooka. We haven't seen it with the bazooka. Uh, okay. Is it mount on that kit? Yes, the hyper bazooka, there's on the back of the kit, there's a little bazooka holder that pops out and then you can just pop it right in and you have a bazooka holder. Now, you're probably curious since the backpack is not on the kit right now, does it fit with the backpack installed? So let me pop that back on for you and the answer is yes it does. So there you have the backpack and this kit also comes with a shield which I've also gone ahead and weathered so in the beginning of the video I had the shield installed on the back of the kit let me go ahead and snap it onto the arm like you would traditionally see for a more traditional look for the RX2 RX 178 I should say alright also being a Mark II it does come with the Vulcan pod system, which just clips right on his head like so. Uh, there you go. And it really, it really adds something to this kit. You also do with this kit, you get not just one, but two beam sabers for all your all your saber. beam saber needs that you're for all your beam saber needs you know todd with all the work that you've done on your mark ii uh you know i can't really add anything when it comes to the mark ii titans i built but i can say that they do come the titans anyway comes with its own little set of marking stickers have you got that there i was showing you yes i do all right so the the aeug version does not come with these marking stickers only the titans version yeah. And maybe I should bring in your Titans too, just to have them side by side. So, if you if you if you really want to have uh, some marking stickers, and go ahead and go for the the blue Titans version. But uh, it's all uh, personal preference, I think. Personal preference. Do you like the blue? Do you like the more traditional light gray colors? Yeah, it's really it's really a personal preference. I guess if you get both, you can kit bash and kind of mix it up. Mm, you can go go crazy. This is the revive, so you can pull off legs and arms from another kit and put it on this one if you really want to have some fun. Looks good. All right. Uh, I think that's about it then for the Revive RX 178 Gundam Mark II. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Todd. Thanks for building the AUG. No. Thanks, Todd. I, I had a lot of fun with the Titans. Like. I love the Mark II and a revived version with you know the 
an extra pulsability and the proportions and stuff. It's great. It's amazing. I still prefer the real grade, but again, the real grade is going to take you like five times as long to build. So for those people looking for the quick Mark II fix, there it is. Now we have to talk about one 100 IBO kits. This is the first one. It just came out and uh, I did the little uh, preview last very week. Very popular. Oh yeah. It's yeah. Really popular. Very and there's popular. good reason for it and we're going to go into that. Okay. So you can see that I've got the frame built. This isn't something that I decided to do. This is how Bandai has designed these kits. Okay. You build all of this first, so you can see I've got this, this frame with the, with the gold stickers and everything else. Looks really good, mm -hmm. but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the armor, follow the manual, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to armor this baby up right in front of the camera. Hi everybody, here is my 1100 Barbatos so far. Now, uh, people might wonder, like, why did I stop? Like, why do I not have any armor on this thing? Is it because I want to show the frame? Well, that's part of it. But actually, I did this because it became apparent to me as I started building this that this is how Bandai has you build this. It has you build the entire frame first, and after that, you can put on the armor. So, uh, like, I'll show you the manual really quickly here. Here's the manual, and you can see that it's showing you how to build arm frame, waist frame, you know, leg frame down here, and then the leg frame. And then you kind of put the entirety together, and you have your barber toes. And after that, you need to turn your page fold open your sheets here because this is three pages like I think I've shown already and then you just start putting the armor on and I figured you know what that's pretty cool and I do definitely want to show everybody this frame here because you can see uh, yeah you've got the stickers in here but they actually look really good like here's the uh, the uh, hip joint sorry uh, there's actually uh, eight stickers like two on each side here one two three four five six seven eight and then you get your stickers on the back of the skirt here and you have them at the bottom of your leg and your chest so you put those on you slop all your frame together and uh, you're left with this skinny looking barbatos which actually is kind of cool now um, people were asking about like the frame of this is it like an mg and the answer is yes and no um, you assemble it similar to how you assemble an MG, but it's also kind of like the HG. But um, when it comes to like working mechanisms like you find, gimmicks for master grades, the only ones you have on this kit that I've found so far are these working pistons in the chest. Now, um, a lot of people thought that maybe we'd see you know, the, the pistons on the back here work as well. That's not the case, although you can get in there with Gundam marker and detail them up. But um, of course, we now know that the high resolution version is coming and likely that's going to feature a lot of the moving mechanisms that this far less expensive uh, 1100 scale has. So um, here we go. Let's put it here. And I'm going to actually work my way on the armor. And I've prepared some things like what I could do here. I could put these little stickers on. So I've kind of prepared those. And more or less, I'm going to, I'm going to build this, this on the camera here. So I'll zoom in a little bit so you can get a little better view of what's going on and I'll hope I can keep everything in the shot here and what they actually need me to do is pop off these shoulder pieces so I pop off the shoulder pieces like so I go to my a runner which is the one that has all the colored parts on it there's only one of them and I'm gonna grab a 16 and 17 so let's start with a 16 which goes on the right side of them if you're looking from his view and here's a 17 now i'm gonna go quickly here so i don't want this video to be terribly long and if i leave a nub you'll have to forgive me so you're left with this piece like this once you cut it off and what you need to do is you need to kind of fit it up into here like so it's on the underside of this and you're actually then pushing this back in so there we go let me get this one like this, make sure it's facing the right way. Otherwise, this will definitely not work because of how the alignment is. It's off center. Push it in like that. And that could have been done better. Okay, so from there now, uh, I'm going to grab a 15, which is this piece here. And we're just kind of adding parts to this frame as we go. And uh, we'll just, it looks like we're going to do the body armor, the torso first. This one is supposed to slide in from the back but it's supposed to wrap around the neck here so if I can find out where it's supposed to go I can be sure to get it in the right spot now this is kind of like a collar 
and it looks like it's there's these grooves here that it is supposed to go into and I need to spread it just enough to kind of line those up and if I get it correctly come on boy fortunately for me like I do have a little bit of give in, in this piece here because this is a poly cap these little pipes here this is not a hard plastic piece so it will bend a little bit as I go here and I'll push it forward like that see now he's in there like so I got the collar in this is kind of unique because usually when you're building master grades anyway the collar is one of the last parts you're putting on but I'm gonna do it first here now um, parts for the chest I need to make sure that I've got well I've already got the sticker on this guy I prepped that I think I prepped all the stickers except for the legs but there's you know that little piece there and now I need A11 and A12. A11 is the yellow chest vents A12 is right here a12. No, what am I looking at? It's not A12. It says A31. A12 is this white piece here. Afterwards, I'll need that blue piece. You know, if I was thinking clearly instead of trying to rush, I would have realized that A12 was probably very close to A11. So, let's put these together, everybody. Like so. Like this. Here we go. Like that. Once you get these two pieces on, I'm going to grab my my piece here and uh, make sure it's pointing the right way, right? Because that emblem has to look a specific way, point in a specific direction. I have this now. There you go. And now I need A31, which is the blue piece that I was looking at before. So getting only slightly ahead of myself. There we go. Now these will actually clamp down on top of this piece that I put a sticker on here. So I'm gonna move my head if I can kind of get it out that way. And the first thing it wants me to do is just to drop this on from the top. So if I can line it up like that, push it on there. You can see uh, I got this space here. I now have to push this piece on from below. So I'm gonna hold it here with my finger to make sure it doesn't start pushing back off. And hopefully I will get this lined up properly. And away we go. So that looks more or less proper to me. And uh, I didn't have to move any frame parts out of the way to do it. That's really cool. And you can see that I can still view these pistons down here. So that's pretty awesome. And actually, like, that's kind of it. Head body armor section of this manual is done. And I'm going to move on to the head armor. Now, it might be a little bit more difficult because of the smaller pieces. But the first thing I need to do is uh, take off this piece here and put it right there. I need to get A18, which is the face mask, and is somewhat small, so I'm going to make sure I don't drop it. Here we go. Can you see that, everybody? A18 is a face mask. Now, um, it says that you can just kind of do this while this is on the, the, the kit. I think if you wanted to, you could pull the entire head off, and I actually might do that so I can approach this from the bottom. Like so. Interestingly enough, the polycap actually stayed on there. You can see that polycap. It's shaped similar to the RE100 style of polycap. You have to just have to line up the grooves properly and then, you know, it'll drop on there, no problem. So I will now get a 19. And uh, it is another small part, but not as small as that first one. And this is a red one. Now, this one is supposed to kind of go. No, oh, I'm going to pull this off again. <laughs> kind of under here, it's his, it's his chin, right? So looking at it from this side, I need to make sure that this is pointed down. So can I get that on there? Click, it actually clicked in there, but I'm thinking that I got it pointed the wrong way because <laughs> it, it clicked in there nicely, but kind of pointing the wrong way so if I can get that piece off flip it over and try again maybe that's how it's supposed to be or maybe I had it right the first time and it's just supposed to have that look so I don't want to have something facing the wrong way because you know people let you know about it on the internet mm, that definitely fits much easier that way so I'm going to leave it like so and I will get these side pieces. Now these side pieces, um, to put them on the side of the head, you need actually 
two parts go together before you can kind of sandwich them on there. So I'll get these parts here, A4 and 5. Everybody can see my little head here. So 4 and 5 and 3 and 2. And 3 and 2 are these small yellow parts here. Part two is on this side. Part three is on this side. So we are going to line these up from the underneath here, the underside. Push them on as far as you can go. You need them there. Let's get this one as well. Hopefully everybody can see it. Push it in as far as you can get it. It actually fits in really, really well in there. So once you've got that, well, then you're just going to put this on either side of this guy's head. Like, oh, that's looking like Mr. Barbatos, isn't he? And to finish this off, there's only two pieces. One of them is this giant fin. I, I don't know if we are going to call this a V-fin, but it's, you know, that mantle that most Gundams are known to have. And I want to trim that gate a little bit. And... Then the last white piece. And here we go. So, taking that. And uh, this one is supposed to go on from the, the top. And this one's supposed to go on from the front. And remember, you can kind of build this in, without having to take the, the head off of the kit. But I went ahead and did it anyway. Probably would allow me a little bit extra room to move and better angles to show. So, and the face mask just came off because I pushed it too hard. There you go. Okay, interesting. I could put it back on with all the armor parts on without having to take the head off. <laughs> There we go. There's a Barbatos. His head's upside down. Sorry, guys. But there's his head. Uh, well, of course, we'll get a better angle of this once I'm all done this thing. So from there, I've, I've got, you know, pretty much the body and head done. So I'm, I'm doing arms now. And I do say, okay, um, take off the hand. And I'll take off this other hand anyway. And I need B3 and B8. So... B runners, there's two of them, right? Matching armor parts. B3 and B8. There's B3. B8. I might just show one arm because, of course, this process is going to repeat the other arm, but we'll see how, how long it takes. Because if it's not too long, I imagine we can just keep going. So uh, there are grooves in here on this frame. So just lining up these grooves. Make sure your frame is closed totally though, otherwise it won't go. See, there you go. It goes on. This one from below. Like this. Like that. Now I don't have to put the hand on yet it says, but I might do so anyway just so I don't forget about it. Put it back on. You can see all these little detail here. Um, you know, these hoses or whatever we want to call them, piping and stuff. These aren't molded as part of these larger pieces. These are extra pieces that you put on as you build. So in that sense, it feels like a master grade. It's just that how you close up the limbs also feels like an HG. B10, B9, B1. B1 with the universe. What I'm supposed to do here is just kind of sandwich them on to the lower arm. So I, I'll take the number one first. It has this little tab type thing here. It's just going to drop on here like that, I believe. Now, uh, what I do from that point is just to attach these in here. Make sure they stay. There's a little space here to hook up with this groove as well. So everything kind of should match. It might actually work better. Um, to put the side pieces on and then slide this on, but I think this should work too with how they've got the design, except for that gate. There it goes. 
like so. Now it's definitely looking like a barbatose arm, but you can still articulate, right? Not bad. There we go. And uh, it did, at this point, it just says, you know, put the hand back on. So I do that and put on this, this cover. You do have a cover here for the hand. There you go. So that's the one off. And you know what? That was fairly simple and painless, even for me. So I'm going to go ahead and put on that other arm. <laughs> that frame has the same weak gait. That's okay. You are given extra hands, of course, to grip the weapon. And you're given extra armor parts for those. So you don't have to worry about swapping the, arm, the armor covers on those. Oh, I forgot one piece. Number three. There we go. I think actually uh, the majority of the time I'm going to be spending on this build comes from the frame. It actually uh, it had quite a few more parts to it than it does the the armor. Which isn't necessarily something we're used to seeing on a, a lower, how do you say, scale kit when it comes to it comes to lower prices, like the lower price HG kits and RE kits and stuff like that. Sometimes there's not much in the way of frame and then you have some armor parts to put on to, to kind of just cover up the fact that you don't have frame. This one you do have quite a bit of frame going on in there. So now I've got my arms on here. Now I'm going to put this aside to show you the shoulders a bit here. Um, there are stickers in this kit that was mentioned before. Uh, some people mentioned that they weren't too happy about that well it's kind of in some ways cannot be helped but one thing worth mentioning is that uh, the stickers of course bandai stickers work really really well now with the with the shoulders here it's just a case of putting these two parts together and then covering up with this but you can see oh do i got this going the right way like that you can see though that um, this here, it mentions in the manual that it needs to be covered by a sticker. These are two stickers, by the way, one and two. Um, not always easy to line up. Um, this one is one sticker, so you got to make sure that you have this properly squeezed together before you attempt to put it on now. I didn't bring my design knife into this build, which I probably should have, so we're going to just go, go hand here. We're going to use my hands. And we are going to try and get the sticker on here. So, wish me luck. Generally what I try to do is match up a corner and two edges at the same time. Because I feel if I can get two edges lined up at the same time, the rest kind of fall into place. Right? So, not quite lined up, but close. So this will now, should, fall into place. And I can adjust it because it's the short side. And then I can just go ahead and monkey around with this to get it on. Like so, that goes in there, and not bad, I'm not bad for just using my fingers in there. You can't be exact, uh, as precise as if you had like a design knife or tweezers, you know, that kind of thing. But it looks pretty good, and I gotta do it again. <laughs> I gotta do the same thing for the other side, of course, because we have two of them. So, let's see if I can do it as easily as I did last time, or better. Let's hope not worse though. And you want to make sure that these pieces are definitely like pushed together as far as you can go before you put that sticker on. And that's what this piece will actually help you do if you put it on first. If you can get this piece on all the way, it will actually hold these closed so that when you get back to using your stickers, it should work fairly well. So. that part. Again, I'm going over quite a few contours, so I've got to go kind of edge by edge here, corner by corner. Okay, got that on there. And once you have them on, well, we have these parts here. These are a separate part. You kind of 
put on to the kit afterwards. Like maybe I can show you here. See, it's just this part fits on there, clink. And once you have that, you should be able to, it says, mount these onto that piece. So I'm gonna take your word for it, Ben, now, and I'm going to put it on from this way, not from this way, from this way. Here we go. There's one, and the second, and I'm having problems with this armor piece, kind of wanting to pop off. Maybe I haven't lined it up properly. So, I will have a look and confirm. All right, pop it in there. Remember this, this thing is uh, it's made to kind of piece together as a frame, and there might be like later on, in the, the animes or whatever, you might see that there's parts being swapped and stuff, so they're already kind of preparing that. So here's my my upper body. All right, it's, it's good to go. He's definitely looking like that Barbatos, although I kind of miss seeing those shoulder frame pieces. Um, now we are going to do uh, the legs. And what they, again, we're doing by, we're doing by two. And I do need to put a, um, geez, I do need to put a sticker there, but I'm wondering if I really want to at this point. Let's see how we go. So, uh, I need a small E1 runner for this part here because I just need a small part from here. It's called part number four. So I'll grab that. And you're doing, I think, a two on each side. So, uh, or two on each leg, one on each side of each leg. So I'll grab those now, All right? And number four, B18, I can grab these ones again too. So I've got, I've got these kind of things. So um, first things first, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it together like, like that, All right? And I'll do that for the other side as well. on which gate mark I want showing. <laughs> and then once you get that on, it says that these are supposed to go on here. Like so. Now, that's on there like that. Side leg. I'm meant to put a sticker here, but I'm going to leave that off for now because it's the biggest one and might be the, one of the more difficult ones. And I would rather just do it afterwards when uh, I can turn the camera off and take a little bit more time. So. This piece will go into here, has to come in right at this angle and it will kind of stop in there. You can see how it stops in there. There you go. So what it wants me to do now is it wants me to bend the leg, right? And in here, I'm supposed to put another piece A10. So I'll grab that, the upper thigh armor. Right. And we will slide it into here. If I got the right angle here. One, two, right. three, I come back, all right? But I can pop this on as well now. Cover up my nice sticker. There we go, all right? And now I have uh, some parts to put onto the feet here. So I'll take this piece here. A27, and I will just put it on to the bottom of the foot. Uh, it looks like this guy's gonna be really, really sturdy, right, with that big foot there. And of course, it's it's meant to be really, really articulate, really flexible, so that's another cool part of these kits, Bandai's design, and B13 for the back of the leg. Here we go. So I'm gonna do the back of the leg. I'm gonna Fix that head, the piece that I keep bumping. But I'm turning this guy over now. You can see here's the back of the leg that I'm working on. First things first, let's see if I can get this up in the upper leg. There's the, the hole right there, no problem. Let's just drop that on there. And if I got it lined up right, it should meet the front armor right there. 
And then this piece here, again, it has a kind of like a, a squarish peg. It's gonna drop down onto here from this angle, like that. So I cover, cover this up. Now it's just a matter of finishing the foot. So for that, I need uh, the top part, which they're calling B15. But I also need B17, which looks like the ankle armor, right? And I also need uh, B12, and B12 takes stickers. Mm, how do I feel about that right now? 16 and 15. It actually looks quite simple, although there's areas for it to bend. So I'm gonna try it. So here's the stickers, they're red. They're meant to go on this edge and bend around. So we'll just do a quick attempt at it. I say quick attempt, but if I notice that it's something's like even a fraction of a millimeter out of alignment, then I keep trying to redo it. It's a, it's a, a sickness. All right. Of course it bends all around here, right? You get that kind of, kind of look. So I might as well do the other side while I have this off here. Again, should have had my design knife, but didn't think too far ahead. I'm on a deadline. There we go, so good enough. So now, okay, this will go on to the, the back of the foot here. There's a groove, let's drop that in there like that. Interesting that they're giving me color for the bottom of the feet instead of a frame part. I mean, on the wrong leg here. Instead of a, sorry, a red part, right? You get a red part here, but you get a sticker here. Uh, you know. Anyway, with these two pieces, I am meant to take these um, pegs here, you can see, and actually slide them up into here. And once I have those up here like that, you can see it bends. Then I can drop that onto the front of the foot. So let's line that up. Hopefully, this is meant to go here. And once it's pushed down in here, like this will, once it's pushed down, this will move. It's not gonna pop off, although if you really pull hard, it might take the foot back apart, All right? So that's, that completes his foot, his leg, and we're just gonna have to repeat the process for the next one. So allow me to cut off pretty much every part I might need and uh, we'll do this all again. That's what we do here. If it wasn't so quick, I probably would just build one leg and turn off the camera to do the next one. Same with the arms. But because it actually goes very smoothly, uh, I'm, I'm just going for it here. So you guys might have a bit of a long episode. I hope you don't mind. All right, okay, so do what we, do what we remember here. Right, I need that, I need these. These gates are at an angle, so you might have to do some trimming and make, at least make sure you get your, your cut right here. Right. Okay, like that, like this. Like what I need, of course, I need the uh, parts from the A runner, which is a white piece and a red piece and a yellow piece. All the standard Gundam colors are there. It's kind of like I can, if I can see how far I can go without looking at the manual again. Challenge yourself. Build one leg. Don't look at the manual and then try to build the second one. I do that sometimes. Do that, do this. They line up pretty easily. Like sometimes when you have to line up multiple points that you can't really see, it becomes kind of difficult. But this, then Barbatos here, it actually lines up quite well. All right, so. Already I can get the, the foot down to that part here. So hopefully you guys kind of saw most of that. But, of course, now I gotta get this part with the stickers that... Mm, 
could have been done better. Ben, I just need to give us one extra red part that kind of covered the foot. But again, if you haven't designed your your mobile suit to be able to do that, then you're, you are going to have to use stickers or you're going to have to use a lot of different parts and a different type of design. And that's where, you know, master grade come in. It'll be interesting to see now that it's been unveiled what they plan to do with the high res version of this kit in these types of areas. Not bad, not bad. Okay. Drop it on here like so. Make sure I get the right angle. <laughs> Otherwise I'm not going to get it on there. It's interesting that I got that one in no problem, but this one's giving me fits. I'm actually uh, pushed a little too hard and it's the groove it's supposed to go in kind of didn't line up properly at all. Here we go. Model kit maintenance. Get that groove started. Plastic, of course, is the, it's not the the hard frame plastic from the Masary kits up until a few years ago. We're using that softer frame and uh, just by pushing this piece in at the wrong angle I actually bent that plastic. So let's see if I can doctor it up here. There we go. That's better. You're on there now. So I got my feet. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I always kind of pull it close to my face when I get a, a little too uh, tough space to work in or too difficult but here's how he's looking now he feels a little bit heavier of course now that I got that armor on there um, I've still got the waist parts to go here so that's what I'm gonna do next I need a couple of these it says I need a 24 which are going to be what am I looking at these red pieces I need both of these this may be the side skirt so they're both looking the same like that and I need B11 and I need these, these two, A, E2. Right. E2, B11, and, oh, sorry, here's the B runner, here's the B11. I need E, A, and B. B is always gonna be white, those runners are always white. Okay, now what I do is similar to what I did with the, the side of the, the, that large piece on the leg is I'm going to put these in here like so and then, and then uh, slide this in from the side. Now you can see it just sits in there. So let's do it again for this one. All right, like so. These will then just snap right onto the skirt here. So I go one, and I go two. Interesting, they use the red piece as the connection. You can actually see the red part under there, so it doesn't look like frame anymore. Uh, I need this large piece, which is A8, all right, because I got this back skirt to work on here now. This A8 piece will go on from the back here and does cover up those nice foil stickers you put on there but I don't think that can really be avoided if you want to put your your armor parts on. Now with that on I'm going to work on uh, the front part here and there's a few steps to it here so uh, you do need yellow parts So you got your yellow parts, and then you're going to need these these front side skirts, and they are ball, ball jointed here, similar to like HGs. All right. So drop this on. Fits in there nicely. Similar to an HG, this type this type of assembly, but it, it's actually. Uh, larger pieces so in some ways it's easier to work with 
and then we need A21. That's a big gate. An E1. So I'm going back to this, this E runner because I have this, this piece here I'm going to need. So what I'm going to do, it says that I need to put this together here first. So let me plug this in like that and this kind of look. Then I put on these side skirts like so, like we would do a lot of kits we've experienced in the past, right? But uh, this will pop out if I don't kind of hold it in there and that's what this uh, red piece is for. And drop on from the top, like so. So I've actually just got this, this entire assembly as it is. Uh, other parts of this kit, you're kind of just slapping pieces onto the frame. And this one, I've got this entire assembly and I will then guide it onto the frame like so. So, if I got it lined up, <laughs> get it lined up first. There we go, like this. So, um, turning the page over, uh, the next part is what I need to do for the backpacks. Like uh, the HG, you could kind of swap things around and what you wanted to do. Um, I'll assemble the backpack here, and like I said, I don't think I'm going to go on onto the weapons. It's just uh, a matter of time, of course. But maybe we'll bring this guy on the show next week and have a better look at just kind of how he functions as well once he's got those weapons on. Now I also need C runner here and C runner I believe is this one and I have like these kind of side pieces here. I am going to need uh, all these they're called number 39 which is one two three four. I'm gonna need all of these. Let's get them all. With those, I'm putting them kind of on the sides here. Easy, no problem. I can do this all day, although it'd be kind of boring. Um, now there is a sticker here. There is a sticker here. It's called number 17. Now I just want to see if this is something I want to do right now or I don't want to do right now. Um, let's go ahead and try it. But you see like this is a, well, I'll zoom in guys, sorry. Again, we'll zoom in as much as we can. And you can see that this is kind of a crazy shape. Well, it's, it's got to go over a lot of angles and that's why it's, I think it's got to fit right in the middle here. Now, why they didn't just give me a, a frame colored piece to jab in from the back, I'm not sure. Like going with stickers on something like this that has all these edges and angles probably could have been done better. But, you know, every time you think that, it becomes an issue of having to mold or redesign an entire runner or making an, an entirely new runner. And then there's costs involved with that, of course. You know, plastic isn't free. So um, more or less, you have to try and kind of get it on the middle there. I felt that I did a kind of an okay job. It's not ideal. I, but again, you know, that's what master grade or perfect grade or even, dare we say it, we don't know yet high red is for so until it's such a time as we can build a better version of this in one 100 scale this is kind of what we have to work with so i'm satisfied with that for now so i also have to grab these this large piece off the runner it might be the biggest part of the kit like this and with that it's it's a 28 like so and then I'm going to need another piece. Where did they have it? Ah, this is what it is. It's A13. And A30. Now this is a gimmick piece. It is meant to move. So, I'll take this piece here. And uh, what I need to do is I need to come up from below, similar to how I did that foot ankle armor. I need to come in like this and then spin it back. So it actually goes like this. And once I have it back, 
uh, you kind of think it would be good to go the other way, like flat, like I can still see kind of how this all works here. It doesn't look like it's a, an outside piece, so to speak. Um, well, I got a cover for that. That will cover it up. And I have uh, some last piece on the E-Runner. Like this. So what I'm doing is I'm going to slide this up in here like this. Then I'll cover it up. Then I grab my, my nice piece, line up all the pegs, and there you go. Now, will it move? Yes, it does. Right? It opens and closes. Not bad. Not bad. So I'm going to slap this on here like this. I'm going to take my pieces here like this. And I'm going to slap this on here and I will be done my 1100 Barbatos. All right, there you go, the 1100 Barbatos. We're gonna have lots of pictures on, those, on the post for this. They're really, really cool. Um, now we have some comments to get to. Yes, we have some comments. Stuff to give away, so. And the giveaway. So okay. let me start with Sancho. Mm -hmm. I'm a little disappointed about the 1-100 bar bato stickers, but we'll still pick it up because I will need it to pair with the 1-100th Gusion. Gusion, that's right. when that. it comes out. Also, I love the blast effects on the Origin, and I wish more kits would come with them as mm -hmm. they add tons of playability and posing options. That's right. Last week, Ryan, you, you weren't here, but I showed the Origin MG, which comes with the effects parts. You know, it's not an extra set or anything. You just get the effects parts and you plug it in, and you can create the, the action scenes. You know, he's firing the rockets from his chest and stuff like that. It's cool. And he's right. Like, I wish it came with more kits. But at the same time, if you got those, I'm, they Don't connect. Don't they sell them as accessories? Uh, well, that's the thing. Like, extras? I think... Um, you know, Bandai has their MS Builders Parts series. Yeah. Don't be surprised if you start seeing that as an MS Builders Parts series so you can get them and put them with whichever kit you want. Yeah, Bandai also does the effects parts with their collector's items, their action toys. Yeah, so yeah. It's, they it's do. kind of good that they're bringing it into the I agree. kits as well. Next, Logan Zaraki. Love watching the Gunpla TV videos. The hobby is starting to become popular here in the UK. Nice. That is awesome. I've had the privilege of building on the Gundam X kits. Mm -hmm. uh, would build another in a heartbeat. Sid, could you do an improved Gundam building tutorial like you did in the early days? Yeah, see, so, well, we've talked about this before, comments like this have come up, like, can you do tutorials again? Can, can you do tutorials again? And Ryan has even come to me and said, Sid, we need these tutorials to be done again separately so they're accessible and easily referenced. And I'm like, okay, Ryan. <laughs> like, Ryan, I'm kind of busy. So uh, slowly but surely, you know, I'm formulating like, a shooting schedule and a, a sequence and how I want them to go and I'm going to be making these and now that Todd's here I'm probably going to ask him for his help as well Yeah. because the one person it's, it's not always easy it's to set everything yeah. up and get the close-ups and everything there's else. There's quite a lot actually. There's quite a lot yeah. of information that I want to show and uh, the format will be a little bit different from what you used to seeing on Gumpa TV but uh, they'll be like short little five to ten minute videos that can be used for reference and uh, you know we'll get call them like Hobby School 101 yeah, or something yeah, like that like something. we'll have a different yeah. uh, playlist in our YouTube channel and everything else so it's coming. Please be patient. I'm so everyone can skill I've up. I've already put aside the kits that I'm going to need to do <laughs> in front of the camera so people can see panel lines and they can see seam removal and stuff like that. It's I been a while, like up. a few years. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, no, no, I mean, it's just it's kind of memories, you know? Yeah, I know, back in the beginning. Back in the days when yeah. we were all like little Bambies. Cursed Key. Can't wait to order my RX-78 Origin Virgin, version, sorry. It ain't a virgin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just finished my 2.0 and 3.0. And I'm actually looking into the RG, origin ver, original version car and 1.0 and mm -hmm. maybe a face palm Gundam. Mm -hmm. Where is face palm? Just to round out the collection, it's kind of shame that the origin version doesn't include a core fighter, but I already have enough. True. Um, he, he, there's a lot of RX 7802s or 2s in yeah, the MG scale. Think, yeah. And uh, this guy's, you know, he's, he's built them, so he, he has an idea of how the difference is. And we've shown them on the show and everything else. But... Uh, now that the origin was has been released uh, over a week ago, and some people have theirs now, like I, I want people to let us know in the comments, like which is your favorite masquerade version of the RX seven eight zero two, and uh, I, I want you to tell us which one's your favorite and why. But I'm gonna sweeten the pot a little bit. See, uh, back just before the release of uh, the RX seven eight two origin mm -hmm. version, we got these promotional materials, and they're really cool. You know, they have this like custom artwork and stuff like that and some of like the little gimmicks stuff like you'll see these on the box but if 
people would like these, I will I will give these out to people who comment on which their favorite uh, RX seventy two is. Now I only got so your favorite uh, RX seventy two MG 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 and why and, and why uh, I'll pick ten winners. I'll I'll mail them off to these guys. So this is like you'll a, get a limited edition Japan. Well, that's the thing. Like they pr they put this out when they promote the kit, uh -huh. but that's it. So. You know they're not going to make these again. So you, I mean, this artwork's pretty cool. Actually, on Bandai wall, does a good job of. Yeah, you know, I, I, really I love like Bandai promotions. Yeah. They, when they're not hiding stuff from us, they really do a good job of pimping their stuff. That's for sure. So I'm going <sighs> to share the love because I got a, a few of these hanging around. So. Cool. So yeah. So let us know which is your favorite Master Grade Arc 782 and why. And uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll announce who's going to get some of these if you want. Every time I see 3.0, I'm like. Where is more 3.0? But know. anyway, give me the Zaku 3.0. Yeah, but the next guy, Dango yeah. Master. Yeah, I think I would. Or this actually looks like D at Mangam, but I think it means A. Mm. Okay. I think I would quite in, quite enjoy receiving a package marked Triple X in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> would you? See, you? Uh, Ryan, you weren't here, but I might as well bring this out now. And we'll talk. Yeah, about I read it. the comments. People yeah. are totally excited People about are the all prizes. Triple X. Well, yeah, because I'm giving, I'm giving away the double X and the triple X. And so I call it or good double X and the X, and I call it triple X. You know, there's three X's in there, and then people went all triple X happy in the <laughs> comments. So, so this guy says he'd be happy to you know see something marked triple X in the mail. Like, what would what would your significant other or parent or child think if that box showed up marked X X X? Or um, just the post office. Yeah, or the know, post they office. might want to have a look. The in FBI there. might yeah. stop by. So I won't mark <laughs> it X X X, but I'll I'll mark it as you like I normally do plastic model kit. So. Somebody will win the two Master Grade X and Double X Gundams. So I've got the winner here. We had 260 comments. Oh crap, this is the wrong piece of paper. Yes, this is the right. <laughs> this is the right piece of paper. Don't worry, I got it here. We had 260 comments. Uh, and uh, the, la the winner is To Be Seen Full. I think that's a cool name. To yeah. Be Seen Full after Thanksgiving dinner. To Be Seen Full. To Be Seen Full. So he says, Good job, Todd. I don't mind winning the triple X. <laughs> and there you go. So this is the second week in a row that somebody has won the kit they wanted by saying I want it. Like last week. Now you're gonna get 300 comments for the next one. Yeah, I, want I don't that. choose them that way. It's all random. <laughs> like some people were still typing Super Fumina, which won last week. But there you go. So um, I'll be contacting To Be Seen Full, and uh, I will be emailing you in a few days' time. Don't feel for, like you have to contact me. People send, still send me messages I'm to Hobby TV and to our customer service. Which well, they're very anxious. To I know get they are, opinion. but trust me, I'll get you your stuff. <laughs> I'll get you your stuff. I always let a little bit of time pass. Sid is reliable. I know. So I figure that <laughs> it's more exciting for the guy to find out he won by seeing his comment read on the video. Like yeah. if I email you before you get a chance to watch the video, then you might not watch the yeah, video. You might not already, feel your yeah, heart it's starting like you, to beat. You that moment when your name and yeah. comment is read, like I think that's like special. Lotto. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's this this smaller version. You know, this video we usually put it out on a Monday and I give people two days time or whatever. I'm contacting them on a Wednesday or Thursday and mailing it on a Friday. So um, give me that time. All right? So keep your pants on. Keep your pants on and your <laughs> and your nippers handy. I don't know. I don't know how to follow that up. Uh, so I will be contacting TBC before. Sweet. There you go. So now I have more kits to give away. Okay, I'll remind people while you grab them sure. how they can enter this. So you yep. have to go to episode 190 on Hobbylink TV. Yes. Uh, the blog that we have yeah. and leave a comment there. And yep. then you stand a reasonably good chance, one in 200 maybe, or two That's in fine. 200, or three in 200 based upon the amount of kits. Hey, it's three. Okay, three in three, three in 200, yeah. depending. Three in however many. But yeah, so remember the blog. That's right. But we do appreciate your comments everywhere. Oh, else, yeah, of but, course. Yeah. Comment all over the place. Yeah. But, you know, for the ch chance, chance, of, chance of winning, you comment on episode 190. I like so, this guy. Yeah, this guy was cool. Originally, when I saw it, I was like, uh, that's it? Like, that's the grunt suit kind of thing? But the, the high mock actually turned out to be a lot of fun. Now, we had him when we built it. I think he built that GeoCities Tokyo Skyline, and we had him <laughs> all playing on there. So. It is very cool. It works with the option sets that you could get oh, at the, the time. Oh, so, Yeah, the sky scraper. So there's the high mock. That's the first one. Second one, we have a Shin Matsunaga Zaku. Now, this isn't the new um, origin type Zaku build. It, they had gone back just before that, and they had put out like a new type of Zaku. They did Johnny Ridden. They did Shin Matsunaga. They did the, the Black Tri-Stars as well, I believe. So uh, we had this guy on the show. Maybe I got that reversed. But... Um, 
I really love Zaku's, and I think Shin Masunaga is one of the coolest mm. ones. So I'm reluctantly parting with this one. Don't worry, I have a Master Grade somewhere. There you go. Master Grade Shin Masunaga kit is amazing. I highly recommend it. Any 2.0, but the Matsunaga is the best. All right, and also we have the powered GM oh, Cardi, and now I figured it was appropriate to give this away because, you know, uh, we already showed the Super Fumina, which uses a lot of these parts. And so because I got the Fumina, maybe they don't need the GM Cardigan. So we're going to give it away to somebody. And it's worth noting that, look at that guy. Oh, yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> That's so cool. But remember that you get a lot of extra parts from other um, GM variation kits. So I'm going to send those as well. So you're going to have a bunch of extra parts as well to use for customization or part swapping. Or I love these shields and guns. That's just the arms, sweet. The arms that extend out. Yeah. The Fumina had them as well. So the powered arms arms or whatever they're called. Arms powered or literature. So there you go. There's three You can never kits. have enough arms. I know. In space. I know. Even, <laughs> even, can you imagine if you had like more arms at, at home in real life too, Ryan? Yeah, that'd be you awesome. You could build Gundam while you play Battlefront. Yeah. Multitasking just would I need work. two heads though. <laughs> That's like... exactly zap on dual block. <laughs> All right. It's very so hard to go. game and build a Gundam. <laughs> That's right. So, um, this is a new month. It's December. Um, the end of the month, I know uh, it should be uh, December 26th is a Saturday. It's the mm. last day for us of the year here at work as well. But that also coincides with the MG version ka of the V2 Gundam. Ooh. I'm going to try and have that video up before the end of the year. So people okay. can watch it and not have to wait till January when we come back. Good so idea. And we get that kit. I might build it right in front of the camera. I might take it home, build it, and bring it back and show it on camera. But we'll try and get that video up uh, before December 26th. Oh, sweet. That's good. So people can watch yes. that. Of course, we have a bunch of other kits coming up in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And we'll be building some things as well. And we'll try to fit in what we can. So December will be a little bit of a busy month for us, but mm. we're going to try and get these videos up. And I just want to say, episode 200 is coming. Mm, two or three months. And, well, we're already 190. But yeah, so figure 10, 12, 14 weeks. Yeah. Um, I'm already planning it. It's going to be big. It's going to probably be long, but it might not be like this huge thing. We're going to try and get a bunch of little kind of things put in there. Kind of make it special. A... It's, a, it's a benchmark, and I want it to be memorable. So That's like four years. Will it be four years? Four well, it depends years? how many we put out a year. Yeah. We figure we put, we put out almost one a week. It's 50 a year. So yeah, four years. Four years. But it took us a little longer than that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've had stuff. special episodes oh, and yeah. expos and, stuff and conventions. In between and... there. And you know, we had to skip weeks and things like that. So yeah, but yeah. four and a half, five years, somewhere we'll, in we'll there. We'll do something we special. We hit 200, so sure. I want to do something special. Yeah. We'll have a special stuff to give away. And uh, we'll just make it like a celebration. So it might not be Feb might not be to February, so yeah. <laughs> who knows what's happening at that time. Just She's a worker. I'm just getting like excited. I'm gonna maybe release teasers and trailers. <laughs> it's like the Star 200. Wars movie. Gumpa TV. Episode you know. two hundred and like thirty seconds start shots <clears throat> and stuff like that. You know, there's one thing said I I hope it's not better that two hundredth episode than the new Star Wars movie. Because if it is... I hope it's the same. <laughs> they're both awesome. <laughs> I hope they're both uh, awesome. Speaking of, I, I have to say the same way because we've talked about Star Wars and we always talk about Star Wars. There's something called the Super Trailer that just went up on YouTube. Yeah, it said Super Excited. It's like a fan edit Pulled trailer. I don't trailer. know where he pulled half this footage from because it's all new and I have not seen it before. But if you don't want any spoilers, don't watch it. But if you want to see some stuff, watch it. Super don't Trailer. Don't watch it. I watched it. Ryan's not going to Like it's... Yeah. 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 Ugh. Ryan's, anyway, Ryan's so scared of being spoiled that he doesn't even want to play Battlefront, but he did anyway. I did, but like there was no support. Well, I mean, there might be when I'm watching the movie, I'm like, oh my god, I recognize that crashed spaceship. Mm -hmm. But other than that, good. They you know, I did. I doubt Princess Leia and Han and the Palpatine are going to show up because they're in the game. Yeah. So. <laughs> if they did if they show, show up, the guard. I mean, but like the young versions, it's oh, not okay. like old Han running around. Yeah, yeah. It's young Han and Palpatine is there, like executing everyone. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if they showed up, that would be like, whoa. But yeah. they won't. Maybe they'll show up as Force Ghosts. Well, I hope the Emperor doesn't show up. Then Dark Little <sighs> Death is in vain. But anyway, let's just let's You're stop. reminding we'll me of going. Revenge of the Sith, and I, I just want to cry. Okay. All okay. Right. Um, All right. Just, you know, once again, yep. you know, we're brought to you by HLJ.com, Hobby mm -hmm. Japan. You know, we sell all the stuff you see here, so mm -hmm. buy from us. Um, you can also reach us on Hobby Link TV. Yep. Uh, and the groups, we have fantastic groups. Yeah, Facebook, YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, Twitter Tumblr. Tumblr. Yeah. 
Uh, if you ever need to contact our customer service, you can just go to our main site yep. and they'll always help you out. And um, yeah, that's, and just, you know, thanks for supporting the show. Indeed. Almost wow. 200 episodes. I know. Thanks for watching 190 episodes and counting. Yeah, we wouldn't actually be here if you guys would <laughs> I mean, watch us and buy from us, actually. Right. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. Yeah, I'm feeling all emotional. Must uh, be Star Wars. I know, it's December. <laughs> Christmas Star Wars, episode 200. It's all coming together. Flu medication. We're going to bring our hankies to the, to the uh, theater. They have Star Wars tissue in this country. I have some. Yeah, yeah. They have like Star Wars everything. everything. You go to the shopping mall here. Oh my God. I know, I gave out mini donuts to everybody yeah, yesterday. Star Wars mission. Everybody had a different little character on the baggie. And the dark side chocolates. Yeah, yeah. We sold those. They were on yeah, our side. Yeah, they are on our side. I don't yeah. know. They're, they're sold, sold out. They're, they're sold, sold out. out. So, yeah, yeah you, it's everywhere. You can throw a stone here and basically yeah, right. hit Star Wars. You can't turn a corner without running into a Star Wars character. So. But I'm not sure how excited Japan is. I think there's a ton of advertising, but you know, mm, you know. They always come little around to things late sometimes, especially the, the foreign stuff. Like we were looking at tickets for yeah, the theater like and they, the first day IMAX tickets were still available. Like all yeah. the center seats are all sold out. But the ones on the side, they're still available. If we're gonna that was only the first. I mean, maybe the second day was empty. Yeah, the first day was the first. Sid and I are debating the whole well, IMAX. Yeah. Do we go to like the 2D here in the local theater here and then go to the IMAX? Well, it's the new away? 4D, whatever that is. Yeah, but I think only in the theater here, they're only doing 2D. That's, okay. Yeah, so anyway. I want to see 2D first and then I want to up my experience at each time. I've said to Sid and a number of other people <laughs> that <laughs> I have good. never watched a movie twice in the cinema. Yeah, well, now it's going to happen. Well, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's just let's just stop. Okay, let's stop. Sorry. Just, we'll continue to talk about Star Wars next yeah, week. All right? Yeah. We don't. Okay. Shut up. I know. Okay. So let's okay. shut up. Okay. okay. See you guys later. See you guys.